So, lads, the January transfer window is underway. Um, there are a few players out there that we could potentially sign this window, if not in the summer. And one of those uh, that we're going to kickstart this with is Marcus Turam from Borussia Mönchengladbach. Um, glad I said that name very correctly there uh, <laughs> after many practices off camera. But, um, yeah, it's an interesting one. Um, as we kind of bring up his player profile, for those of you who aren't really familiar with with the player um he's 25 years old um he's quite tall six foot four um can play sort of left wing or as a center forward um you might recognize him from the world cup uh made a few appearances for france off the bench um and you know had a, had a quite a good impact in in some of the games he did come on looks like his contract's up at the end of this summer uh end of this year sorry so any sign in we could potentially get a pre-contract for the summer or just sign him in january um, and we have an estimated value of 10 mil. So, Mike, I'll start with you. Um, just talk to us a bit about Marcus Turam as a player. I'll put these back up, uh, the graphic back up so people can kind of see. And we'll just go through kind of the strengths of him as a player and what he could add to West Ham. Yeah, so first off, he is the son of <clears throat> the illustrious Lillian Turam. So, you know, he comes from very good stock and pedigree for one. Um, but he's been a player that I've admired for a long time. Uh in fact, when we signed uh, Pablo Fornells, I was also saying we should be signing Turam. Uh, basically, he's very adept at playing the left side or the right side. He had a bit of a difficult time last year, um, kind of struggled for consistency, but towards the end of the season, he started to get that back. Um, since mbolo has gone, he's really, really taken to uh, being the main man at, uh, <clears throat> at BMG. You know, he is <laughs> near, near enough a goal a game at the moment. He's got a couple of assists. Uh, he's incredibly powerful and adds to that kind of powerful physique and, and kind of stature that he has. He's also got incredible pace. And when he strikes the ball, it can stay struck. He has many elements about him that you would look at Antonio kind of thing and go, oh, wow, it's like an embodiment of Antonio. I know some people last year were talking about Mbolo. <clears throat> For me, it's always been Duran. Like, Duran is... is is that person. And the fact that he can play in both left and right side is incredible for us because it also means that the likes of Kourne can move to the right side to then give competition. Who's that? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Who's that? Uh, he can. He could, when he is fit, eventually, could give then, obviously, uh, competition to Bowen. It would also mean that the likes of Four Nails no longer gets considered as a, as a left winger. <laughs> and, again, it's that player that can mean that in a game, we can, in effect, we don't need a sub to augment our formation kind of thing. Because if you already have Skamaka and Turam on, you can then put them together as a tandem. You can also put Bowen in that and actually go for a proper, true, you know, free up front if needs be. Um, and yeah, like his composure in front of goal is second to none. And this season in the uh, Bundesliga, he has been phenomenal. And that, that's... <laughs> <laughs> the goal against, um, if you get a chance to watch it, watch the goal he scored against Dortmund. Um, basically, they win the ball high on the halfway line and he just nips it past and is gone. They, they just can't get near him. He just bursts forward. Um, and you see Shot Leback just chasing after him. You can just see in his faces, I've got no chance of getting here. Um, he is exactly what we need because we've talked about him many times about needing pace and he is that player that gives us that that pace. What I would say the downsides is, and a Sloth will probably talk about this as well, and he didn't mention it earlier to us, so I'm probably going to steal his fun to hear that he's quite comfortable in staying in the Bundesliga to the end of the year. There is likely to be competition and other teams bigger than us maybe looking at him. But if you want to, again, flip that on its head, the argument is we can be the springboard to other Premier League clubs we can offer him the option or the chance at least for some genuine silverware with uh, Conference League. And <clears throat> I'm sure we can also improve his wages as well. Um, so there are benefits we can give him. Yeah. But ultimately, obviously, if he's comfortable in Germany as it is, the likelihood is he probably will have someone like a Dortmund or even a, a Bayern probably would because they love to buy yeah. up the best players and then stockpile. Uh, you know, there are probably going to be offers for him in the Bundesliga to stay at the end of the season. There's probably sure. offers now on the table 
for him uh, from other clubs as well because a pre-contract could be signed as is in his last six months. But yeah, you know, we'll stop there. <laughs> Give someone else a chance. Sloth, what about you? Do you think if he, you know, theoretically, if he was to join the club, um, would he be a starter for you? Would he be a bench player, more of an impact off the bench, or where would you see him starting in? Based on this season alone, some of the performances um, that we've had and his own performances in the Bundesliga. Don't get me wrong, it's it's not high quality division. Um, his sort of, you know, physical aspects of it, the physical aspects of his game have really helped him this season. Um, but they're things that translate easily. Uh, from division to division, whether it's in the Bundesliga or in the Premier League, when you're that big, when you're that quick, and when you can strike the ball like he can, it's it's not really an issue of um, uh, taking that long to adjust or whether he will adjust, in my opinion. Um, he is the player that I think a lot of fans have been crying out for in terms of replacing Antonio. He offers yeah. that outlet and he can also play on the wing, which sounds very familiar. Um, however, it's not so much a case of on his day, he's unplayable. It's, you know, at least two to three times a game, he will do something that will create a golden chance. And last season, he did struggle. Um, it wasn't... It, he, he, this season, I think part of the reason he could potentially look to stay in the Bundesliga is because he wants to win the golden boot. Now, is that going to change if you offer him a big fat juicy contract? It probably is, but he's, he, he's got a point to prove. And I think that is pro it's a really kind of good statement for his attitude and what he wants to do. Now, yeah. Gladbach are not going to want to lose him for free. That's, uh, that's for sure. In the summer, they are, very much looking like they will just see it's just see him leave so i think they're probably going to be open to offers i think around yeah. 15 million pound mark i know eddie howe was watching him <laughs> castle and whether or not that happens i think they've got enough in their attack um that they don't really need to but for me he goes straight into the side whether it's at left wing, it's nothing against Ben Rama because he's been the bright spark this season a lot of the time. But yeah. if you think you could have Thuram, uh, sorry, Thuram and Skamaka and potentially Bowen buzzing about him, then either of those two, uh, either of those three, you know, that's six foot three plus um, on two of them. And at set pieces, you're bullying people. You are creating havoc, but also uh, to Ram's speed is creating chances for others around him, which with Skamaka in particular is going to be key. Do you think if he was to come in January, hypothetically, is he going to be able to have a bigger enough impact for us, uh, for what we need? Because we are lacking goals. Um, we are lacking definitely someone who will stick the ball in the back of the net. We know Skamaka can do that, but Antonio is definitely not someone that can when he's on the pitch. So is he going to come in, say, in January and guarantee us, you know, maybe five to six goals from now until the end of the season that are going to actually add to this team and, and be important, not only in the Premier League, but also in part of our Europa, Europa Conference League campaign as well? Yeah, I think it's always hard to, to guarantee. No transfer is cast iron or uh, error-proof. Simple as that. Even the best teams get them wrong sometimes. But what he will do is add a new dynamic to our front line. We've mentioned about Bowen not going in behind. Turam is not interested in about coming short all the time. He is the epitome of a give-and-go kind of player when it's put uh, to him centrally. He wants to give you ball and then he wants to burst in behind. He will demand the ball is played into the channel. Is If he's on the wing... He will commit the defender. You just have to look at in for when he came on for France, the couple of games where they were not necessarily at it, he comes on and makes a difference. He yeah. set up uh, Mbappe as well for uh, his hat trick yeah. goal. What a beautiful, brilliant, delicate chip that was as well. To have that 
presence and um, kind of uh, space in your own mind to look around the pitch and to go, that is where I need to put the ball. That also looks as quite a drill team is that they know where people need to be. But it's that kind of player that is going to, if he's on the left, he's not going to be encamped on the left. He's going to want to come in and influence things centrally. He's going to offer support to the likes of Skamaka and it will potentially give him, we talked Bowie not as this player, but he will potentially give him the um, Berardi type player that he's been used to with a player that's going to constantly be, whilst they're wide, they're going to be always coming inside. They're always looking to hit the diagonals behind, always looking to support the striker. So I think it can only have a positive effect. And also it's the unbridled pace he brings is far superior to what Ben Rama has. And he's yeah. incredibly direct. So whilst you can't guarantee he's going to score five goals, I think all in all, physically, he's built for the league. And sure. given the right ammunition, or even just given the ability in which to uh, have some space, I think what we're finding is we've replaced Kamaka. Teams play a lot higher. All of a sudden, if you have Turam, there's that added danger. Of, well, if we play high, if they put it over the top, we might not catch him. Yeah. So then they step off. So you start to then basically encourage teams to be less aggressive against us, to not want to press us high, because all of a sudden you have a genuine threat in behind their defence. So they tend to maybe take a step back, which then gives more space to your centre-backs, gives more space to your midfield. So it's the type of player that can have a positive impact elsewhere because of people are scared of pace. And we've said it all the time. You have pace, you have a threat in behind. And if you have a threat in behind, teams don't often sit high unless they're incredibly brave, like the likes of Liverpool, etc. Because they will utilise, essentially, they trust the defenders because their defence have a bit of pace to manage that. But it's also a calculated risk. We'll push high because we'll suffocate them and we'll deal with it goes behind. Lesser teams don't do that as much. So a player like Turam is going to cause doubt, which currently I don't think we do as a front line. Yeah, I mean, I said I said definitely because uh, f- for me he he offers that outlet, but he also offers the physicality to defend or attack. But I mean this aerially, so he can win a ball from our, from their corner. He can knock that down. He can have the outlet of Skamaka who can aim for with a header or just a pass. And then he can sprint and he can sprint and create space for every single player around him because he will attract defenders away. Now, we haven't had a player who who can do that. I think even since Felipe Anderson is probably the only one who I can think of who just carried the ball back up the opposite end of the pitch. I think it was against Southampton. Just went on that mazy run. Um other than Lingard, yeah, it would probably be Anderson, wouldn't it? Yeah, and I think he offers you the ability to do that yourself. So I think he would at least give you five goal involvements yeah. with what he offers. And when you add to the fact that we could have Bowen off him, we could have Skamako off him, playing him through as well. Let's not forget one of uh, Skamako's strongest assets is his link-up play. Um, if you can, If you have that... I think you're you're guaranteed goals. Cool. Well, we'll see how this January goes, but hopefully, uh, I mean, we definitely need someone to come in and, you know, who knows, Turam could be that answer um, whether we'll be able to get him in January. That remains a big question, but yeah, I mean, it looks like an interesting one. Um, Definitely one to keep an eye on over the next few weeks. And yeah, who knows by the end of it, Turam might just be a West Ham player.